Around 1000 AD, craftsmen began making intricate window designs using lead rather than wood or plaster between pieces of colored glass. Before long, the church was commissioning stained glass windows depicting religious scenes to adorn the great cathedrals of Europe. You can make stained glass two ways. Using copper foil, a technique developed about a hundred years ago by the American artist Louis Comfort Tiffany, or you can use the centuries-old European lead technique, which we're about to see. First, the artist lays a plate of glass over a pattern and traces the parts of the design that she'll cut from that plate. Then she scores her trace line using a glass cutter. A quick snap and the glass separates neatly. She follows the same procedure with different colors and textures of glass for all the pieces of the design. By running the cutter slightly inside the trace line, she leaves room for the strip of lead that will later hold the pieces of glass together. Once she finishes cutting all the pieces, she checks them against the pattern, making sure they fit together properly. Now it's time to assemble the pieces using the pattern as a guide. This zinc molding will frame the panel, its inner groove fitting over the edge of the glass. The artist positions this molding along the perimeter of the pattern. Then she drills an L-shaped wood frame into the work table to hold everything in place during assembly. A few nails keep the molding in place. She'll join the pieces of glass using strips of lead called came. Lead because it's soft enough to bend to the shape of the pieces. After straightening out a long strip of came, she cuts the various lengths she needs to border each piece of glass. The came is shaped in such a way that the glass on each side just slides right under. The cutting pliers, called nippers, are specially designed to slice through the came without deforming it. Once the artist finishes assembling the glass pieces, she pushes everything gently against the wood frame. This squares the panel and ensures the pieces fit together snugly. Now she brushes on flux, a type of acid. This cleans the lead came so that solder will adhere well. Using a soldering iron, she applies a bead of lead and tin solder wherever two strips of lead came join. Then she uses a short bristled brush to coat the lead in black putty. This makes the seams watertight and gives the lead a darker aged look. Finally, she sprinkles on calcium chloride powder called whiting. This sets the putty and polishes the glass and lead to a shine. After four painstaking hours, the panel is finished. More elaborate stained glass works feature hand-painted detailing. The artist first prepares a design on paper, then cuts the pieces of glass accordingly. He paints the design outline on the pieces in black, then fires them in a kiln to set the paint. To create shading, he applies a coat of brown paint called grisaille. Using a dry brush, he removes it from the parts he wants to highlight, then he fires the glass again. Now he paints in the final details and fires the glass for one last time. The paint contains powdered glass, so the intense heat of the kiln bonds it to the glass pieces. The result is nothing short of spectacular.